Learning mathematics is very, very difficult to many people, second only to learning how to speak English. Do you have difficulty? Don't be embarrassed. It's a lot of people don't know what they're doing when they get up there and do their mathematics. We're going to introduce you today to Fort Bend Tutoring, honey. Personalized math tutoring is the solution. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Larry Whittington with Fort Bend Tutoring, and today's lesson is going to be about solving linear equations with fractions. Fractionis. That's right. The method that I use in order to solve equations, ladies and gentlemen, is like you, not liking fractions, is that I go about the business of clearing them out. Okay, I get rid of them in the first step. That's right, no fractions for me. So when I'm looking at this problem number one, I'm looking at two thirds plus one fourth x equals to one third. And I don't want to deal with the fractions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the lowest common denominator. That's right, the least common denominator. And I'm going to try to find that first number that 3, 4, and 3, once again, can go into evenly. And that number would be 12. So I'm going to multiply each and every term by 12. So I'm going to start out by saying 12 times 2 thirds plus 12 times 1 fourth x equals to 12 times 1 third. All right, and by multiplying by the common denominator of all of the terms that I have here, all three terms, I can end up eliminating all of the fractions in one step. So by simplifying this, I know that three will go into 12 four times, and four times two gives me eight. Plus four goes into 12 three times, so therefore three times one gives me three x, and this equals to three, which goes into 12 four times, and then four times one gives me four. So in that one step, I've eliminated all of the fractions that I have in the problem. From there, I can just simply isolate the term with a variable and then solve for it like I normally would. And that means that I'll be adding the additive inverse of positive 8 to both sides. In other words, subtracting 8 to both sides of the equal sign. The 8s will cancel out. I bring down 3x, which equals to negative 4. And then I'll divide both sides by 3. Okay, so in dividing both sides by 3, I end up with x, which now equals to negative 4 thirds. Or if you need to write this as a mixed number, it would be negative 1 and 1 third. So either of these answers would be correct, all right? In most algebra classes, the improper fraction is going to be just fine. However, you may be at a level or have an instructor that prefers that you write your answer as a mixed number. But bottom line, that's the answer. Done and done. So what happened? We started out with number one and we multiplied everything by the least common denominator, the lowest common denominator, the LCD. Okay, That first number, that 3 and 4, would go into evenly, which is 12. By doing that, multiplying that common denominator to each and every term, you're able to eliminate all the fractions and simplify it into this easy equation. The 8 plus 3x equals to 4. Therefore, not having any fractions to deal with, I can go ahead and go straight to the answer. That's the way I like it. All right, well, let's go ahead and look at some more examples then. Let's check it out. Problem number two. In problem number two, I have one third times the quantity of x plus 27 equals to four. In a problem like this, I see that I can use a distributive property. In other words, multiply everything by that one third inside the parentheses, but I don't want to do that. All right, well, once again, I don't want to deal with the fractions if I can avoid it. So what I can do is I can multiply both sides of the equal sign by three, the denominator that I have right here. So I'm going to rewrite this as three times one third times this x plus 27 is going to equal to three times four. All right. In doing so, my threes will cancel out. So I'm just left with one times x plus 27, which is simply x plus 27. And this is going to equal to three times four, which is always 12. I'm able to isolate the variable by subtracting 27 to both sides of the equal sign, a.k.a. the additive inverse of positive 27, negative 27. And then what happens next is I bring down my variable x, the 27s cancel out, and 12 minus 27 will give me a negative 15, and this is the answer done. All right. So once again, our first step is to get rid of the fractions by multiplying by that common denominator of all the terms. You didn't necessarily have to worry about what was inside the parentheses here because it's protected as long as you have something on the outside multiplying. And at one third, we want to get rid of that fraction. We multiplied by three to both sides of the equal sign that canceled out the denominator exactly what we wanted. All right. Let's continue on. Okay. Moving on to the next problem. 
In problem number three, we have negative three-fourths plus m equals to five-halves. So what I want to do is I want to eliminate the fractions, and I can do so by multiplying each and every term by the common denominator, which is four. That's right. Four is the first number that two and four can go into evenly. In other words, that LCD, the least common denominator. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you're having difficulty finding the least common denominator, feel free to check out our video, Finding the Least Common Denominator, mm -hmm, the LCD or LCM. Uh, the method will do. So here, multiplying each term by 4, I have 4 times negative 3 fourths plus 4m equals to 4 times 5 halves. So next, I'll be simplifying this. The 4s will cancel out to bring me down a negative 3 plus 4m, which equals 2. Check this out. 2 goes into 4, 2 times. So 2 times 5 gives me 10, all right? So by multiplying 4 times 5 halves, I'm able to simplify before I multiply. The 2 goes into 4 twice, and so 2 times 5, that remaining numerator, is going to equal to 10. Now I have a linear equation with no fractions, all right? Exactly what I wanted. So I'm going to go ahead and add 3 to both sides of my equal sign here. This gives me 4m equals to 13. Once I have this, I'm going to divide both sides by the coefficient in front of the variable, which is 4. The 4 is cancel out to leave me with m equals to 13 fourths. And as I stated before, your 13 fourths, that is the answer that you can submit. Or if you need to change this into a mixed number, 4 goes into 13 three times and leaves you with a remainder of 1 over that denominator of 4. All right, so either one of these answers is correct. So you can submit your answer as 13 fourths or 3 and 1 fourth. Either one would be correct, and that's problem number 3. All right, let's keep it moving. Keep it moving, all right? So I got quite a few examples to show you today. Problem number four, we have two sevenths x minus one half x equals to three fourths x plus one. Well, what we have is we have a lot of fractions. Yeah, so I'm looking at denominators seven, two, and four, and the first number that all three of these denominators will go into evenly is gonna be 28. So I'm gonna multiply each and every term by 28 here, okay? So that's exactly what I'll do. So I'm gonna have 28 times 2 sevenths x minus 28 times 1 half x equals to 28 times 3 fourths x and then I have 28 times 1. All right, so that's what I have thus far. So what I'll be doing is I'll next simplify, and I know that 7 will go into 28 four times. So I have 4 times 2, which is 8x minus 2 goes into 28 14 times, so that'll be 14x, which equals to, on the right side of the equal sign, 4 goes into that 28 7 times, so 7 times 3 is going to give me 21x. Then I have my 28 times 1, which is going to be 28. All right, so this is going to be my equation at 8x minus 14x equals to 21x plus 28. That's what I'm left with after I finish simplifying the equation. Now on the left side, notice that I have like terms here, so I can combine these like terms. I know that 8x minus 14x is going to give me a negative 6x. This is going to equal to 21x plus 28. All right. So I know I want to get all of my variables on one side of the equal sign, so I'm going to go ahead and subtract 21x to both sides of the equal sign, all right? And in doing so, I have negative 6x, negative 21x. This will combine to give me negative 27x, which equals to 28, yeah. All right, and then next, I'll be dividing both sides by negative 27, and lo and behold, I'll have x equals to negative 28 27 all right? And that's the answer there, that's it. Okay, you don't like that? You don't like that eight? Okay, I don't either. Let's fix the 8. Oh, let's just fix it all. Okay, so once again, it was 28 27 All right, there it is. And once again, you can change this into a mixed number if you need to. If you had to, it would be negative 1 and 1 27 All right, and that's what you would end up with. Done and done. Let's put some red boxes around these. There you go. There you go. Here's your red boxes. Gotcha. All right, next problem coming up is going to be problem number 5. Let's see what that's looking like. All right, here we go. Here we go. There it is. Problem number five. Seven-eighths x minus one-fourth plus one-half x equals to three-fourths plus x. Once again, fractions. Riddle throughout the problem, 
and I do not want to deal with them. So much like you, I don't like dealing with fractions. So if I can avoid doing it, I will. So here I'm going to multiply everything by the lowest common denominator, which will be 8. 8 is going to be the first number that 8, 4, and 2 can all go into evenly. Remember that when you're multiplying everything by that LCD, each and every term, regardless of whether it has a fraction in it or not, must be multiplied by the LCD. So in this case, I'll be multiplying by 8, each and every term. So it'll look like this. I'll have 8 times 7 eighths x minus 8 times 1 fourth plus 8 times 1 half x equals to 8 times 3 fourths plus 8 times x. So even though our last term x didn't have a fraction involved there, we still had to multiply each and every term by 8, including the x. All right, so there we have it. Everything's being multiplied by that LCD of 8. Now to simplify. The 8s will cancel out, so I'll bring down 7x minus 4 goes into 8 twice, so 2 times 1 will leave me with 2 plus 2 goes into 8 4 times, 4 times 1 gives me 4x, this now equals to 4 going into 8 twice, 2 times 3 is always going to be 6 plus my 8x. Mm -hmm. After we finish simplifying, go ahead and look to see if you can combine any like terms on either side of your equal sign, and we can. This 7x and 4x will combine to give me 11x minus 2, which equals to 6 plus 8x. All right, so that's what we have thus far. Then I will be subtracting 8x to both sides of the equal sign. So I'm going to subtract 8x here and here. And now that gives me the opportunity to cancel out those 8x's on the right side. And on the left side, 11x minus 8x is always 3x minus a 2, which now equals a 6. Mm -hmm. Isolating the term with a variable, that 3x, I'm going to add 2 to both sides. And check it out. I'm going to be bringing down 3x, which equals to 8. So dividing both sides by 3, we'll end up with... Mm -hmm. Let's see now. We'll end up with x equals to 8 thirds. All right. So it's, or you can write this as a mixed number as 2 and 2 thirds. So either one of these answers is going to be correct. Let's get those red boxes around the answer because that's what I like. Put in a red box around my answer. So either 8 thirds or 2 and 2 thirds will be the result to that problem there. All right. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving here. Next problem. Problem number six. Here, ladies and gentlemen, notice that we have the variable and the numerator. So, same thing applies. I still don't want to have a fraction in the equation if I can avoid it. So, I'll just go ahead and just multiply everything by the one denominator that I have, and that's 3. So, I'll be multiplying each and every term by 3. So, this will be 3 times x over 3 plus 3 times 4, which now equals to 3 times 21. So, this is what I have. Simplifying the equation, the 3's will cancel out to leave me with x plus 12 equals to 3 times 21, which is 63. And that's what I have. So getting that x by itself, all I'll need to do is subtract 12 to both sides of my equal sign. So finally, we'll end up with a nice looking solution here. We'll have x equals to 51. And that's it. That's the answer. Red boxing it. Coming up. There it is. Okay, that was problem number six, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so next, and finally, by the way, problem number seven, all right? In problem number seven, we have 3x minus 2 thirds equals 5x over 2 plus 2. So I don't want to have to deal with a fraction, so I'll be multiplying everything by the lowest common denominator. The least common denominator is 6 in this case. So each of these four terms are going to be multiplied by 6. So it'll look like this. I'll have 6 times 3x minus 6 times 2 thirds equals to 6 times 5x over 2 plus 6 times 2. And that's what I have. All right, let's look at that whole equation right there. From here, we're going to simplify what we can. I am going to be bringing down 6 times 3x, which is 18x, minus 3 goes into 6 twice, so 2 times 2 gives me 4. This equals to 2 going into 6 3 times. 3 times 5x is 15x, 
plus 6 times 2, which is 12. So my rewritten equation, this 18x minus 4 equals to 15x plus 12, is going to be the equation that I have after I multiply every single term by the least common denominator. From here, I'm going to isolate my variable, get it on one side of the equal sign. So I'm going to subtract 15x to both sides. Yeah getting all the x's on the left hand side and keep in mind it doesn't matter whether you solve for your variable on the left or the right side it's just that I prefer a positive coefficient that number in front of the variable so that's why I'm subtracting 15x to both sides of the equal sign yeah so 18x minus 15x is 3x so I have 3x minus 4 which now equals to 12 from here I'll be adding 4 to both sides of the equal sign the additive inverse, the opposite of negative 4 is positive 4. So that gives me 3x, which now equals to 16. And then I'll be dividing both sides by 3. So dividing both sides by 3, I end up with x equals to 16 thirds. And this can be your answer right there. Or if you prefer a mixed number, 3 goes into 16 five times. And that leaves you with one left over, your denominator of 3. All right. Red box in it. Coming up. Okay, so either one of these, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the solution that you can submit. And this is Larry Whittington with Fort Bend Tutoring. Once again, we appreciate you rating, commenting, and subscribing. Especially subscribe. Appreciate it. All right, you guys take care. Bye-bye. We certainly hope you enjoyed today's presentation by Fort Bend Tutoring. Did you understand the program? Would you like to rate us or give us some feedback or subscribe to us? Leave a nice comment. Don't just leave something ignorant on there. If you didn't understand the lesson, ask the professor to explain it for you. Don't just get mad and write something ignorant on there.